Hello everyone and welcome to Adam Shar Weekly. In this video, I'm going to discuss a few items that are on my WWDC 2020 wishlist. So let's go ahead and get started. First of all, of course, SwiftUI made a splash in 2019 and I believe SwiftUI is an incredible framework which allows me to create an application for iOS very, very quickly as compared to UIKit. But obviously, it's a new framework, so it does have some issues like the better error messages. So hopefully in 2020 or WWDC 2020, they will announce that now the Swift UI has better error messages. So to kind of pinpoint where the error is actually happening. Currently, we don't really have a grid control. So we have to use a list control in order to make a grid. And I covered how to create a grid control uh, in my, one of my previous videos. You are more than happy to check it out. Now, a little birdie told me that there are already plans for the grid control and we will definitely be seeing a grid control in Surf UI, the next version, whether it is 2.0 or 1.5. We also need many different controls that are missing from Surf UI, like the map view control, AR view, progress indicator, text view control, and many other controls. Now, Obviously, we can just create those controls and bring those controls back into Swift UI by using the view representable protocol, but it would be nice if they're just built into so that we don't have to do all of that stuff again. One of the controls that is definitely missing, which is very important, is the image view or the image control, which takes in a URL so that all the images can be downloaded from a URL asynchronously and this is currently not part of Swift UI so I really hope if they have to just pick one control they can do image control and I think grid is already planned so that should be available at WWDC. For the Swift language itself, Swift language was released in 2014 so from that point of view it's not really that mature anyways uh, but I would definitely like to see returning types implicitly, meaning sometime, sometimes when you are returning from a closure and you have already noticed it, if you are working with closures, that sometimes you return something from a closure and Swift is like, well, I don't know what you're returning. Can you kind of help me out to explicitly specify the type that you're returning? And you have to put uh, like the type that you're returning explicitly. So it would be nice if Swift language is a little bit more smart enough to detect those types. Uh, if you're working with the Vapor framework, this is going to be a very common problem that you will have to explicitly say the time that you're returning. Another feature which is promises and async await in pretty much all the languages this is available. So hopefully they will add that into Swift language. But again, Swift is not really 10 years old or you know, it's not really like a 15 or 30 year old language. So I think these things will take time, but this is definitely on my wish list. Property wrappers was in introduced uh, last year, and uh, it would be nice if we can include some built-in property wrapper for JSON mapping, Swift validation, and even asynchronous tasks like, hey, I'm gonna put this property wrapper on this particular item, and this item will be set in the main thread. So all of these things can be done using property wrappers. Let's talk about Xcode. Now, I don't know if it's possible right now or how much work it takes, but I would definitely like the built-in terminal and ability to create multiple terminals uh, in Xcode, a terminal that I could just jump into, like start a server or do some other operations. Maybe it is possible right now, but maybe there is uh, different ways of getting about to that. So it should be very, very uh, seamless if you are building a terminal, kind of like VS Code. You just open a terminal, and you can open like multiple terminals if you want to, and it is super, super handy. Faster builds and indexing. Uh, this has been a problem for Xcode for a very long time. Builds are usually slow, and indexing, when it is indexing for the first time, is also very, very, very slow. Uh, so if we can get faster builds and indexing, that would help really a lot. Now this feature is already available on hover function definition and documentation uh, in VS Code. I use VS Code for my day job and it is just super awesome. Like that particular editor is really, really awesome. And I think Xcode can definitely 
take some inspirations from VS Code. In VS Code, if you're writing a function or maybe you just downloaded a third-party JavaScript library, and if you just hover on the function, it will tell you what arguments you need to pass and the documentation is just right there. So you don't have to do anything. So this kind of functionality, if we can bring it to Xcode, that would be awesome. You just hover on the function and it will tell you, well, you need to pass five arguments of this type and also tell you the return type. And new interface for GitHub. The Xcode interface for GitHub is super confusing and all the things are just so hidden that it is impossible for me to use GitHub. And I don't think many people actually use Xcode GitHub functionality because it is super confusing. It works like half of the time. Sometimes you are checking in files and it will just not check in the files. Sometimes you want to take a, make a branch of the another branch and that will completely fail. And uh, you know, it's just a mess. So I hope they can take some, again, inspiration from other tools like VS Code and create a better interface for GitHub. Now, this is not going to happen, but uh, this is a wish list, so I can wish for anything. Swift Air or whatever they want to call it, Swift Cloud, basically server-side Swift. Now, iOS developers, they are afraid of server-side, right? I mean, how many iOS developers actually go and build the backend? They simply use Firebase. They simply use pre-built solutions. Now, there are some frameworks that are available in Swift community. Kaitura was one of them. It got like killed. Uh, there is another framework called Perfect. But the main framework for server-side Swift right now is called Vapor. And that is you can use to write Swift language to create your server. Server is obviously very, very important because most of the apps will be communicating with the server. Now, if I have to write a server, I'm just going to go and write the server in JavaScript and Node and Express. I'll be done with it. But most of the developers or iOS developers that I know, they don't want to go outside the bounds of the iOS. So if they're not going to outside the bounds to learn ASP.NET or Ruby on Rails or Django or Go or JavaScript, then we have to bring things to them, which can lead to a server-side framework in Swift. Now, the reason that I'm saying that Apple should invest in this is that this is the only way to bring developers to the server-side framework. Because if Apple is investing in these things, then other developers in the iOS community were gonna jump on it. Just like we saw with augmented reality, just like we saw with combined framework for reactive programming, this is not gonna happen, this WWDC, but I think this is certainly a great framework that Apple can create and allow our community to move just from the client side to also server side using their favorite programming language, Swift. And obviously bug fixes. Um, City Shortcuts is plagued with bugs. I mean, literally plagued. Last year, I went to LinkedIn to record some videos and one of the courses that I was recording was on City Shortcuts. And literally every video that I created, it started with, oh, well, this is a bug and hopefully that will be fixed in the future. Literally every video. So hopefully they will fix City Shortcut bugs. There are a lot of bugs in City Shortcuts. It's a great framework but they really need to control the bugs. And obviously Xcode Playground, which was released in 2014. Uh, it still is not up to the standards. I mean, if you simply download the latest Xcode and create a new playground, just wait, just create a new play playground and just wait for 20 seconds. Your CPU is gonna go to 100%, guaranteed. No, you're not even writing any line of code. You just create a new playground and on like just creating a new playground is going to take you to 100% CPU. Your CPU is going to just burn out. There's some definitely deeper issues in Xcode playgrounds and those are not fixed since 2014. It's, uh, it's more of a, that I have a wish, I guess, that they will release it. I have, uh, you know, a faith that they can, they can fix these things if they just, make sure that they invest time uh, on these things. So it's a hope. MapKit, MapKit was actually great, uh, but for the last two years, it is also plagued with bugs. I mean, you will 
drop annotation, they will never appear, you will have some weird errors, it will only run on a device and not on a simulator. Lots of issues going on with the map kit, which is a great framework to, to create map application. So that is where they also need, obviously, uh, the bug fixes. So this is it. This is my small WWDC 2020 wish list. Um, I also obviously wish for augmented reality to be more advanced. Maybe they will be able to capture uneven surfaces which are not walls and which are not uh, ground or table surfaces, horizontal or vertical, like uneven surfaces. That's all in the wish list. Uh, we just, uh, I just can't wait for WWDC and uh, hopefully it will be an amazing WWDC and hopefully some of these things will be addressed over there. Not all, but hopefully we'll see a better version. In the end, if they even release like, instead of 100 features, they release like 15 or 20 features, but they fix the bugs, I'll be more than happy with that. More than happy with that, all right? So there you have it. What is in your wish list? Write in the comments, get the conversation going. Thank you so much. If you like this channel, subscribe to it and give me a thumbs up. That really helps. Thank you so much.